Hello crafters and artisans and welcome back to Psychedelic Squid Fiber Arts. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make one style of leather wool comb covers. There will be two parts to this, this being part one. I'm going to show you the supplies needed, how to create a pattern for your specific wool combs, and the initial assembly in part one. Part two will cover the strap that secures the cover and the finishing touches to elevate your wool comb covers. So the supplies you'll need are a ruler, new leather of five six ounce weight, the weight refers to the thickness of the leather. A pen, scissors or a box cutter. A leather hole punch, I use one that looks like this. A leather stitching punch or awl. This is the leather stitching punch I use with interchangeable heads and this is my awl. Wax thread, leather edge skeeving tool, it looks like this. A burnishing tool, it looks something like this. Burnishing gum, it'll just make it easier to polish the edges of your leather. Leather snap fasteners with a flaring tool. My set looks like this. A lighter, leather sewing needles, a hammer, and a semi soft work surface you're okay with damaging, such as a cheap cutting board from the dollar store. First thing we're going to measure is the length of the tines. Mine are about four and a quarter inches long. The width of my tines are about four and a quarter inches, and the depths of my tine are about three eighths of an inch. All right, next I'm going to create a simple sketch for the general shape of my tines. It's about four and a quarter inches in length, four and a quarter inches tall, and three eighths inch wide. Now, I don't need the cover to go all the way down to the base of the wool comb, so I'm going to stop about three quarters inches from the bottom on both sides. So, four and one quarter inch minus three quarters inch equals three and a half inches plus three eighths inch wide for the top portion of my cover and three and a half inches for the back side of my cover equals seven and three eighths inches. That distance is the full length of my cover front to back. I'm doing a small scale pattern here using my measurements so you can see how I took my measurements and turned that into a pattern. So again, my cover needs to be four and a quarter inch wide and seven and three eighths inch long. For the back side of my cover, I needed to add a 3 16 inch seam allowance on each side to sew my leather together. I'm going to leave the center 3 8 inch without a seam allowance because I will not be sewing the cover closed at the top edge. The front of my cover will have to cover the 3 8 inch sides and while I could add a seam allowance to this, I didn't because the front row of tines are narrower on my combs and I estimated generously with my first measurement of 4 and a quarter inch. However, I encourage you to add a 3 16 inch seam allowance to each side for your covers. Now here's the full scale pattern. You can see the full length of seven and three eighths inches. The back is three and a half inches wide with a three sixteenth inch seam allowance. The front is three and a half inches wide with a three eighths inch addition. And the center three eighths inches is without any additions. Now we'll cut it out to use as our pattern. This is my lovely navy blue leather and it's relatively thick. It would be about a five or six ounce weight leather. I'm going to trace my pattern on the suede side of the leather using a black pen. And then I'm going to cut it out using scissors. Next, I'm going to draw lines to follow for my sewing. So I left a 3 16 inch seam allowance and I'm going to draw a line halfway between that at around the 3 seconds of an inch. It's a little hard to see on camera, but it's really easy for me to see the pen in person. I'm going to draw that line on all four edges I plan to sew together. Next, using a leather stitching punch, or all, I'm going to punch holes in the leather to sew together. I'm going to do this on top of my cutting board so I don't damage the table behind it. I'm going to use the head to mark where the next set of holes go so my stitching is consistent. I'm going to go all the way down this side and do it across all four sides I plan on stitching together. I'm going to keep my holes consistent across the edges because I don't want them to be mismatched or have an unequal number of holes. So for this project, each one of my sides has 19 evenly spaced holes for stitching. Now we're going to use two leather needles and one long piece of wax thread to sew our sides together, placing one sewing needle on each end of the thread to start. I did one side already off camera and now we're going to sew this edge. We're going to be going through the first hole and pulling the thread so that the center of the thread is at the start of the first stitch. 
both either side of the thread we'll be stitching into the next hole. We'll be stitching through each hole twice, once from either side of the leather. Make sure to tighten the thread down after each stitch, but don't do it too tight, otherwise you'll cause your leather to scrunch. So again, in one side with the needle and out the other side. And with the other thread that was already on that side, we'll go into the same hole and out the other side. The two threads should be going through the same hole, but on opposite sides of the leather after each completed stitch. I'm going to finish this up and show you how to tie off and finish a line of stitching. For the last stitch, I'm only going to go through the hole with one thread so both threads end up on the same side. From there, we'll tie a traditional double knot. Snip the ends, leaving about a third of an inch of thread left. And then using our lighter, we'll melt the ends. And then I use the side of my lighter to flatten down the melted wax thread. We're almost done with part one, but first we need to shape the leather a little so it fits our wool combs. To do this, I'm creating creases along the seams where I expect the leather to fold around the tines. We're basically breaking in the leather to fit our combs better, so I'm going to try and create a box shape similar to the tines so it fits well. I'm doing a test fit and it fits pretty well, but I'm not done yet. Check out part 2 to see how to finish out the cover. Please leave any questions you have in the comments below. Thank you so much for exploring the depths of your creativity with me, and I'll see you next time!